excuse me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I know most of you are probably in a turkey coma after yesterday. Gobble, gobble. <clears throat> so here's your chance to just sit back and enjoy another amazing episode of Katie Stole the Mic While You Digest. All right. So you just stay put on the couch wherever you are and you just listen to the lovely sound of my voice. <clears throat> anyway, I want to start right off with our latest segment on the show called Stupidity of the Week. Oh, also, if you hear anything in the background, I have a Christmas movie on. And honestly, it's really giving me all the feels. So I don't even care if you can hear it in the background of this. I'm just going to let it play. So anyways. We're going to start off with stupidity of the week, where I tell you about one of my many experiences with stupidity from this week. So, <clears throat> I'm at the restaurant. I'm at my host job at the restaurant, you know, my side job. Anyways, uh, long story short, I, um, I'm standing there the other day. The next thing, this woman <laughs> comes in. And she's like, um, yeah, okay, so actually, like, my family is, um, now gonna be, like, ten people instead of six people. And I literally am like, how do you not know how many people are in your family? Like, how did you, how did we get from, how did we jump from six to ten? Anyways, so the manager comes over and he's like, oh, how's it going up here, Katie? And I'm like, oh, just flipping fantastic. Like, I guess I'm just going to seat these people in the bathroom because I have nowhere else to put them. So uh, the, the manager proceeds to be like, oh, I think I have an idea. Here, uh, hold on. I'll set something up. And I'm just staring at him with my mouth open because I'm like, there's no empty tables. I, I, I have nothing. There are no, ta there is nowhere to put these people except for the bathroom. He literally uh, proceeds to make a loop around the restaurant and then comes back to me and goes with a straight face. Yeah, I don't have any tables for them. And I respond with, well, no Sherlock. Moving right along. I think it's safe to say that no one wants to go back to work on Monday or maybe you're working today. I'm supposed to host this <laughs> again at the restaurant later. And honestly, I would rather sit home and organize my socks than do that. But unfortunately, I have to go because I need stupid money. I hate money. Look, I know a lot of people hate work and they're dreading Monday morning when they got to get up and do that darn <laughs> all over again. That's why I pick dance people. I love it. I don't dread it. When Monday rolls around, I'm going to be like, well, okay, sounds good. Let's do this dance thing. You know, I love my job. The only thing I hate is how little professional dancers make. So I, I, I don't care if no one wants to listen to this episode, but I think a lot of people will actually relate to what I'm saying because in this country, it's literally like, do something you can't stand for a living and make money. Or do something you actually enjoy and be poor. So let's just go and break this down, shall we? So like I said before, I started dance semi-late for most professional dancers. I started around 13 and I really loved it. Moving my body to music is what I am made to do, okay? I love the challenge of it and the rush you get when you perform. Anyways, you get the picture. The point is, I love my job. And the fact that I am living better than some people I know who hate their job makes me even prouder that I didn't follow the norm and just do some office job. And if you have an office job, no shame. Kudos to you. Do what makes you happy. Now, I know this sounds a little bad. I'm not trying to point figures and sound like, oh my gosh, I am better than everyone else. Uh, immediately, no. Everyone has their own definition of success, but I'm just comparing myself to the general definition of success that we've created here in America, which is like you've pretty much made it if you have a house, you have a family, you got a car, and you know, you're... Eh, sort of happy, like you're you're fine where you are, you're not having mental breakdowns, but like, you know, you're, you're content, you're content. I mean, I'm half joking here, but half serious. I consider myself successful, you know? I have the house, I have the doggos, aka my family, and I'm 
content, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong. There's still so many things I want to do and so many things I want to accomplish. But, you know, I'm doing well, okay? Pats on the back, claps all around. Let's get back to the point of the show today, and I'll stop talking about myself, which is the, <laughs> the fact that I am majorly underpaid. And I know a ton of you out there can relate to this. Dancers in the United States are so underappreciated. That goes for just the arts in general. We don't appreciate art in America. We, we don't. Like if you go to Europe, the ballerinas over there are like celebrities. But here, most Americans couldn't care less, nor do they even know what a dancer is, as proven many times in this podcast. Like, maybe if America actually cared about everyone's well-being instead of just some people's, life would be much better. But I digress. The average professional dancer in America makes around $30,000 per year. That's basically poverty level. And the thing with dance is that people don't even think it's an actual job. It is a job. Thank you very much, okay? Because I work my booty off, all right? I'm over here shaking my butt to entertain America. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm working so hard. And also, I'm working at stupid restaurants and other side hustles just to sur survive, all right? I mean, it's pretty crazy to me how undervalued dance is in America. Like, when people think of doing something for entertainment, they usually just turn on the TV and call it a day. Or if they go out, they probably will go see a movie or go to a concert. Why are dancers not celebrities like movie stars and singers? And I know some of you are probably laughing right now and being like, <laughs> Katie, dance just isn't the same. Have you been to a dance show though? Like seriously, how many dance shows have you actually seen live and in person? Dance concerts are just as crucial to the economy as any other job because guess what? After that dance performance, all those patrons are going to be going out to a restaurant afterwards, buying booze, and boosting our economy. Because guess what? Ever heard of dinner and a show? Especially in places like New York City, dance shows are vital because what a better way to get everyone out and spending money than going to a show, grabbing a drink, and then eating some food afterwards, all right? I feel like there's a stigma around dance performances that, like, it's lame. Uh, guess what? The patients that go to dance shows are way more sophisticated than the animals that go to sports events all right so don't even get me started on that one going to a dance performance is so much classier than going and getting pummeled in the bleachers at a sports event okay my point is if we have all these people like i said in places like new york city that are going to see shows and they're paying money for tickets where is this money going you may ask why are dancers getting paid enough why are you making such a big deal about this katie i'll tell you why because dancers are not valued as much as other entertainers and it really just boils my tea okay if you go to a sporting event and get box seats or whatever the the expensive tickets are called. It's like hundreds of dollars. If you go and get the best seat in a theater at a dance show, it costs around like 40 bucks max. You see the difference? Another problem is because we don't value dance. There's very little funding going towards dance. And yet you have football players being held on pedestals like they're some kind of gods. I mean, for the love of Jesus, I'm working just as hard, if not harder, over here. Like, I hate when sports people are like, Oh, geez, Sean pulled a muscle in his left leg, so he can't possibly play tonight. Oh, God, no. And meanwhile, I'm in point shoes over here with a broken toe and a busted knee and I don't have the option to sit on the bench because if I don't perform I don't get paid unlike these sports people and I'm not trying to hate on sports I'm literally just trying to get you to see the difference okay who decided that some that some people should be paid millions of dollars while others receive nothing because we all need to eat in this world and some of us don't have any money for food sub nights okay and like I said before I'm doing well. Don't worry about me. I eat dinner every night, okay? But do worry about people who have jobs and still can't afford to eat. And that was me once. Why do we allow that to happen in this country? Like, minimum wage jobs 
don't pay the bills. So why do we even have minimum wage jobs? Because especially with inflation, you can't buy with a minimum wage salary. I think that if someone is working, they should be able to live comfortably. And yes, I completely understand that hard work, hard work should pay off. So listen up, you corporate people with fancy cars and money, because I know at this point, a lot of you are like, well, that's just fair. If you work hard and make it to the top, you should make a lot more money. Okay, that's fantastic. But also, getting to the top looks a little different in every job field and takes different skills, all right? So why am I being compared to a finance person when my job is completely different than this? And yes, I say this all the time. People like doctors are more important than dancers. Absolutely. Like, I'm not doing brain surgery. I'm dancing. But I still serve a purpose. We still bring joy to people who come and watch us perform. We still raise awareness for different issues. We still work our butts off. Because don't forget, I've said it before, but right now, I have six different jobs because one dance job doesn't pay all the bills, okay? Right now, I teach at three different dance studios, dance professionally, run my own dance company, and hostess at a restaurant. So I'm sorry, but I'm working hard just like the rest of the country, okay? Now, when I was in college, we had this stupid class called Senior Seminar where basically we would just talk about dance history and like problems in the dance world, but we would never talk about how to actually fix any of the problems. It was always like, yeah, dancers don't get paid a lot. It sucks. You guys are going to have to try and fix that for yourselves because, you know, it's wrong. But, you know, if you want to be in dance, you just have to accept that you're going to be poor. Why do I have to accept that? Like, you know, that great like you know but this is college aren't, aren't i supposed to be learning how to you know do the job i picked and actually make money at it and fixing this particular issue in the dance world is a tough one i get it not a lot of people value dance enough to agree that dancers should be paid more than we currently are it's it's going to take a lot of educating and promoting to actually progress with this issue okay and don't get me wrong, I'm trying over here. That's why I'm explaining this today, because it needs to be talked about. And like I said before, it's not just dance. Any minimum wage job will not support you in America. So why don't we fix that, everyone? I know it's way easier said than done, but we gotta try here, everybody. During COVID-19, when my career entirely shut down, like the dance world was not functioning at all, and during the time, I couldn't even get any unemployment checks at first because the government didn't know what to do with people who didn't have a W-2. Uh, like, what? This is what I'm talking about. Even if you don't think dance is a job still, after even after I just explained everything, cool, whatever, you got problems. But the point is, I'm working. And if I'm working, I shouldn't have to work six jobs just to pay all my bills every month. Like, one job should suffice, everyone. Like I said before, I'm not sure what it's going to take for people to wake up and realize that dance is important. It does have a purpose. It does entertain me, entertain people. It does make people feel things and think. It does cheer people up during hard times. Dance can convey ideas without saying one word. It's pretty darn toot and powerful, if you ask me. I think something that would really help the situation is that people watch dance and not so you think you can dance or the world of dance on TV, those stupid shows. No, 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 no. I'm talking about actually going to a theater, sitting down and watching a live dance performance. Make it a date night or fly solo dolo. Make it a self-care night and see a dance show and then treat yourself to a nice little dinner afterwards. Helping the economy 101. Anyways, the point is, Dance is worth watching. And look, I'm not a sports fan, as you can probably already tell, but I've done my dues, okay? I've watched a Super Bowl. I've been to a baseball game in person. The whole point is that I've experienced that. So you know what? You guys can go watch a goddamn <laughs> dance performance, okay? If I suffer through sports, you people can suffer through dance. <laughs> this is the thing, everybody. Other things are so accessible, like sports. I mean, think about if we actually made dance as important as like football in this country. I mean, I could be making a million dollars here instead of, you know, stupid, sweaty sports people who probably don't even use any of their extra money for good. But I digress. No, everyone, I want to conclude with this. I should not have to be struggling in the United States of America. I work my 
off. And somehow I'm surviving and making a decent living, even though I'm doing what I love and even though that doesn't pay much. We all should be able to do something that makes us happy and not suffer at a job that we hate just to make money. I know what it's like to have negative $5.78 in your bank account. And, you know, it's not a fun feeling, okay? I've been there. But I'm here now in a better place to advocate for my art form and my profession, okay? Dancers deserve to be paid. Dancers do not deserve to work for free. Yes, some gigs aren't paid, and if you're smart, you stay far away from those jobs. But if you're just starting your dance career, you may be totally desperate and take those free jobs. Dancers do not deserve to work and then not be paid immediately for their hard work. And like I said before, this really applies to all jobs. Like, I think people deserve to be paid every week at least. To hell with this bi-weekly Like, who thought that up? Being a professional dancer is a job, everyone. And I'm darn tootin' proud that I've made it in my career that I've always dreamed of doing. Sure, it comes with working at a restaurant for extra cash. But you know what? I've really succeeded in my life. And to all the people that were like, oh my God, give up dance. Like when it was COVID and people were telling me the dance was over and never coming back and I should just give up and get a real job. Yeah, well, look at me now. I didn't quit. I'm still here and I'm still a professional dancer. And I'm going to say this again for the people in the back. No, I am not a stripper. I am a professional dancer. I have a BFA in dance. Go educate yourselves for the love of God.